Um, so my name's Tam. I'm here today in representation of Blue Cross. Um, for 20 years, I've been veterinary nursing and loving it. And for the past 14, I've been the manager of the Blue Cross Animal Hospital in South London, which is an awesome, awesome place, doing great, great work. And very recently, I've been asked to think about how I've managed that team to become a very highly functioning, highly effective, but very happy team in a really positive working environment. And I look back over the past 14 years where I've also studied for two separate degrees in animal behaviour because I became obsessed with animal behaviour, as we probably all have. And I realised that my management style was putting into practice everything I'd learned in those degrees about how we live and learn and teach animals. And I realised that I've been treating my team like dogs. <laughs> but I mean that in a really good way, because I love dogs. And I really like this picture, because you can see all those dogs there are very different personalities. They're different breeds, different sizes. They've got different genetic influences, and they've all had different experiences. But the lady who is ultimately responsible for them just in this picture is holding them on loose leads, and they're all sitting there. I know they're looking at somebody who's holding a sausage, but let that go. <laughs> <laughs> But it represents the fact that she is in control of them and responsible for them. And that's how I feel about my team. But the loose lead that connects me to every single team member who are equally as diverse and rich and varied as all of these dogs is that relationship that I have with each person. And I've based that in the study that I've done. So how does that affect the way that I've managed this team? Well, recognising that, like dogs, as a very complex social species, humans are too. And the more that we can understand how we communicate with each other, the better and more effective our work is going to be for animal welfare, especially in the veterinary world, which is very, very emotionally demanding. It's a really challenging environment to work in because we're trying to help animals to get better. And sometimes, despite our best efforts, they don't, and we see them suffer. And that can take a lot out of you. So it's really important that we recognise each other's non-verbal communication. Just as we teach each other and when we learn about animal behaviour, it's all about recognising what they're telling us with their body language. We've all worked with someone who said to us, it's okay, I'm fine. And we know they're not fine. But it's because we recognise in their body that they're not coping. As a manager, it's important that we do get out amongst our teams and we look at them so that we can understand how they're feeling despite what they're telling us. And that's even more important if we're working remotely and we're perhaps not with our teams all the time. So understanding that emotional expression amongst humans that we work with is, is so important. And also role modelling. When I'm working with an animal and with a dog that I'm teaching, I'm trying to show that dog that I'm there to guide him to make really good choices. And that's what I want to do for my team as well. So also, what do we learn <laughs> through dogs training? It's, about, it's all about that motivation and that drive. So I've learned to recognise that even amongst my huge team of nurses and the vets that I work with, um, everybody has got a different motivation for getting through the work for that day. And it's important to understand that. You might have some members of your team that are really there because they've got lots of external demands. They've got families, they've got dependents that they're caring for and they've got lots of pressures on them, and they really just need to get to the end of that day and get home, and that's their motivation. But you might have other people in the team that are at different stages of their lives and their careers, and they want to achieve something different, and they want to make an impact and take their work into a different direction. But recognising where everybody's motivations lie for their work makes you a better delegator. You can actually give people jobs that are going to really tap into that motivation. So understanding the different things that are driving people's behaviour makes you able to really communicate with them on a level that's going to influence their behaviour. We can also establish our collective motivation. And when you're managing a team that's going through change, and which can be very emotional, it's really useful to remind people that they do have that shared core, that there is a, one motivating factor, and that's the animal welfare and the care of the animals that we're looking after together. We also need to set our environments for success. And so anybody who is a caretaker or a hospital manager, they really um, are the unsung heroes, um, creating that environment that's going to make us all do our work better. So we come on to shared experience and play, and I'm a big believer that 
a team that plays together actually practices bonding and practices really positive communication in a positive and supportive environment. If we've had a really, really difficult week within the veterinary practice, in our team meeting, we'll scrap the agenda and we will um, just incorporate some play and have some fun together. Lastly, I just wanted to come on to reinforcement. It's about the timing of reward. As a manager, I've got to tell my staff when they're behaving in a way that I really like so that I can make sure they repeat that behavior. I don't wait until their personal review. Re reward and recognize them as they're doing their job. Thank you.